Tom here from Inspiration Metalworks. And as you can see, we're not in the shop. Uh, I have actually been traveling quite a bit the last uh, couple of weeks, so uh, most of last week and also again most of this week. So I am coming to you from wonderful Colleen, Texas right now, but I still wanted to get a video out. I did. I was able to shoot some video over the course of the last week or so, so I wanted to get that out to you guys and um, I will do my best to piece it together. Uh, I'll warn you now, it's a little piecemeal. Uh, before we get into that though, I wanted to say thank you. Uh, thank you to everyone who has been contributing and helped me uh, with the lathe project and everything I've been working on with that. But then also thank you to all my new subscribers. Um, in the last couple of weeks I've actually gotten uh, somewhere in the range of 60 some new subscribers. And so uh, I wanted to say thank you all. I really appreciate it and uh, I hope to continue putting out videos that you guys enjoy. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Let's take a look at uh, some of the new additions in the shop. Um, placed uh, an order with Shars this week, or last week I guess. I realized the other day that I had need for some tools that um, I just didn't have. So first up, let's take a look. From Shars, um, you know, I, with this new lathe, I realized um, after I got it that I didn't have the tooling I needed. Um, in particular, I didn't have things like an MT3 arbor for anything, which this one is already spoken for. Go ahead and open this up too. Went ahead and got a uh, keyless chuck to have. Um, you know, I'd like to have a really nice Albrecht, but for right now, this is good enough for what I'm doing. So, went ahead and get that. I'll get that put, you know, cleaned up and put together. Um, nice little addition. The other thing that I've been needing for quite a while, as I've been working on the uh, the hubs for the RX-7, I realized that I did not have any telescoping gauges. So I went ahead and just got a decent little set. Again, you know, it's from Char's. It's not Starrett. I'll upgrade it at some point, but again, I'm looking at what I need for right now. So, it gets me anything from, what are we looking at here? Um, smallest one is a 5 16 so 5 16 to a half, and then the largest here is 6 inch. Right, so, you know, this will do just fine for what I need. Um, yeah, I pulled one out, I'm just playing with it a little bit. I'll make sure you guys can see this. The uh, the lock's a little on the tight side. It's it's very touchy. Um, not as smooth as I'd like. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna clean this up really good and make sure that's oiled well and uh, go from there. I suspect it just needs good cleaning before before you use it, just like anything, All right? Um, so I got these. I I also went ahead and from different source. I got these uh, blades for uh, ring rings or groove, you know, grooving blades. And I'm going to adapt them a little bit for what I need, but here's, here's one of them. I'll take a look at it. So it's carbide tip. Make sure you can see this okay. It's got that carbide tip in here. And so what I'm going to need to do is get the relief ground on that. And you can see it actually has some relief in there. I think you can see it. Uh, but uh, I want to make sure that I've got enough relief in there for uh, I'm going to use this actually as a parting tool when I uh, take the rotors off of the existing hubs and so I want to make sure that I've got something good and strong that'll get through that uh, cast steel. Next up on the list is for the new lathe. Um, I got I got this from Factory Mation. So I've got the new remote. So I need to figure out the wiring on this one, get this wired up, mounted, everything there. But I like it's got the flush button, start, stop, the raised, or sorry, the, the flush start, the raised stop, so I can find it easily. And I did have a, uh, a potentiometer put on there. It was zero to nine. This one doesn't go to 11, folks, sorry. <laughs> but uh, anyways. Um, <coughs> to be perfectly frank, because of 
the way I've got this set up with the VFD and the tumbler switch on the lathe already, I've already got a high and low. So basically 30 and 60. So what I needed was something that'll take me say around 45, right? Because I have a big jump. And you look at the speeds and uh, Dan, I appreciate the, the comments you made about, you know, how often am I, am I going to use 1800 RPMs? And you're right, it's not gonna be very often. It'll be for polishing things. Um, it won't be very often, but my next speed down is 1140 RPMs, which is a big gap. Well, I'll do the math on it and figure out what I need it to be, you know, frequency-wise, to take either the uh, the 1800 down to say 1300 or 1200 or you know, 15, you know 1400 RPM, um, as opposed to the 1140, right? So I may find that 1140 is you know perfectly fine that I just run it. Um, and I never use the potentiometer, but it's nice to be able to fine-tune things a little bit and get that going. So it's here. If I, you know, if I never use this, if I just keep it cranked all the way up and never touch it, that's fine. But if I decide to dial it back a little bit because of harmonics, it gives me the option to do that. Um, okay. The last thing that came in is the one that was most surprising for me. So I got this all together uh, from Factory Mation. Um, I wanted to add a braking resistor to the VFD. And so it's a three horsepower VFD. Thought, okay, you know, well, I got the appropriate braking resistor for it based on um, their recommendations. And I thought it was going to be a you know, few inches long. Well, no. <laughs> this is the braking resistor. Um, let's grab a tape measure here just so you can see. It is nine inches long. A little bit larger than I was expecting. But if this is what I need, this is what I need. Right? So you've got to find a, the right place to mount this. Um, Stan or Scott or Dan uh, would love some feedback. What gauge wire would you use on this? Um, I think I know. I think uh, I'm going to be in the 10 to 12 gauge to be perfectly honest based on uh, the amount of energy we're looking at dissipating. But um, just interested in, in what you have to say about it. Uh, again, always uh, always welcome the uh, advice. So that's it for this week, but just wanted to share. Thanks. Okay, so new additions. We've been uh, getting some tooling for the shop and getting things ready. In addition, you saw that we got the remote panel for the VFD and the braking resistor, which it was a good deal larger than I was expecting, but you know, it won't cause any problems. That's the right size resistor for that three horsepower VFD. So, just gotta get it wired up. Um, let's go from here to the lathe. Uh, first up is the braking system that exists as of uh, right now, without the uh, the braking uh, braking resistor. So grab the pulley off this. You know, this is a two belt pulley system, and. Uh, Part of the reason why I did that is I noticed that the uh, braking mechanism wasn't working. What I was really afraid of is that there wouldn't be any uh, fiber left on the shoes, but as you can see, there's quite a bit. But there's also quite a bit of oil and grease and all kinds of stuff. So I think we just need to get this cleaned up, get it adjusted properly, and the manual braking can go back into, into operation. Okay, so you can see. It needs some cleaning up. Um, I don't know if I can actually find those uh, brake pads, but um, I did some cleaning on that, and I'm, I'm able to. Uh, I did some manual checks on it, and it appears to be uh, after some adjustment, cleaning and adjustment, getting all the grease and, and crud out of there, uh, seems to be working a whole lot better now. So that part is ready to go, and so from there I switched over to the VFD, and I needed to uh, get the backing plate ready for the VFD, and then I did some wiring. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, so this is the downside of this style mill. It is the time you gotta adjust it with this round column mill, you gotta go through, loosen the bolts, bring it up and down, try and get yourself you know, squared back up again. Kind of a pain. Alright, we'll be right back. Uh, 
Yeah, just do some quick deburring here. As you can tell, this back plate's been used for. This is the same back plate that was in the enclosure before. And so they actually had drilled and tapped everything. Um, although, it's funny because I was looking at it and it didn't look like they actually had enough threads to really hold it solid. It's amazing that it held with all the vibrations in a lathe, but. Anyways, get this last one done and we'll get things mounted up. All right, a little update on how we're doing here with the VFD. Um, we got everything in this week and so I'm just getting wiring together. Um, it's interesting trying to figure all this out. Uh, got the manual is really good. It has lots of great you know, schematics in there, the parameters list. And what it boiled down to is I had to figure out both the wiring and the programming to get this to work the way that I wanted to but I've got it. So basically, uh, right now you see the E5, that's the E-stop. Um, I don't know if you can actually see that on the screen or not, but press the start button, contact block engages, and it ramps me up uh, to my frequency, which is set by the potentiometer, which right now is set to full, right? I can adjust that. And so what I'll end up doing, I probably won't ever uh, do a full adjustment on it. I think what I'll end up doing is I'm using this to give me a bit more flexibility in my range. Uh, so more likely than not, if I go, let's see where's 45, just for grins. This is the first time I've tried it. All right, so six. I'll probably live between six and nine on this one. Um, so I don't know if you guys have ever heard this. Uh, you guys know the, the whole story about uh, going from uh, one to 10 and then, you know, it, uh, on the, the dials and then somebody's like, well, you know, I want one that goes to 11. And so there's this, you know, great test of if you're an engineer or an entrepreneur, right? An engineer would give you the big, uh, <laughs> give you the big spiel about how it's really an arbitrary scale. It could be 14 or, you know, whatever, and it doesn't really matter. The entrepreneur would say for an extra thousand dollars, I'll make you one that goes to 12. So just remember that. Anyways, so yeah, I'll live between six and nine on this. And then stop is the e-stop and it does the ramp down the way we'd expect it to do the ramp down. And that's also programmed in the, um, uh, in the VFD itself. So we can do all of that, let's see, operation mode, Desa so functions one and two are, are acceleration time and deceleration time, and so you can adjust those. Um, my, decel my, my up time is three seconds, I've got my decel set to two seconds because I want it to to go fairly quickly, but um, I have since learned that uh, if I do too much, I can put it into a fail state because even at eight, the full range for this one is 1800 RPM, and uh, even empty with just the chuck on there, it uh, it was trying to slow it down too fast. So we got our, our big old capacitor, or sorry, not capacitor, resistor. It'd be bad if it was a capacitor. Um, we've got our braking resistor here to get in place as well, and that just goes in these two connections here and then T123 for our motor. So before I tried to actually get it in place, figured do it on the bench, test it here, mark all my wires. I've got some shrink wrap to uh, do everything right on the, the wiring and we'll be done with this very soon. All right. Well, that's this week's video. I do apologize that uh, there wasn't any machining in there or well, I guess there was, I drilled a couple of holes, but um, yeah, I just wanted to give everybody an update, and again, thank you so much for uh, for all the comments I've been getting, all the help uh, online, both uh, direct comments here, um, also on Facebook and, and Google Plus, and it's been it's been very helpful. I do appreciate it, and again, thank you very much to all my new subscribers. Uh, I'll be out of town for a few more days, but then I'm back in the shop, and hopefully, I'll get all the wiring buttoned up and get this lathe uh, back and fully functional. So. Uh, Pretty exciting times for me. I just got to be patient until I get home. So thanks, guys, from Killeen, Texas. This is Tom from Inspiration Motorworks. Take care.